The next one is particulate matter, and we call this PM. And it can be both primary or secondary. And so some things, um, like dust, is primary. Other things combine in the atmosphere to become secondary. So it's any small particle that's in the air. They're actually um, solids. So other air pollution are gases, but this air pollutant is a solid. They're airborne particles. This is a picture of China, which has horrific air pollution for um, particulate matter from burning coal, but also SO2 and then NOx from increased cars. They have horrific air pollution there. And that's a picture of probably, we're seeing mostly particulate matter there. So we have smokestacks. Um, when you burn wood in your fireplace, that is um, releases particulate matter. In Southern California, we have days where you're not supposed to light a fire in your fireplace when we have um, too much air pollution, so we don't want to add to it. And so they'll tell you it's a no fire day in certain places, not in every place in California. Uh, don't forget pollen too. So pollen's a natural particulate. There are some places, um, for instance, I used to live in North Carolina, that in the spring when the pollen used to fill up the pine trees, it became airborne and it was like swirling yellow everywhere. Um, and so that would be considered particulate matter as well. And so some of it is natural, also dust and volcanic eruptions. So that can all create particulate matter as well. We have some different kinds, so you need to memorize these different kinds. We classify them as coarse. So remember a micron is 10 to the negative six. So if it is um, about 10 microns or less than or equal to 10 microns, then it's going to be called coarse. If it's about 2.5 to 10, then you're going to have fine. And then starting at point um, O1 to the next category is your ultra fine, and this is the worst for lungs. So the smaller they get, they get worse because the body, like the lungs, we have mucous membranes in your lungs and in your nose that will capture a lot of particulates. Have you ever been to a dusty place and you have to blow your nose a lot? Well, that's good because your nose is trapping the particulates before they get into your bloodstream. But the smaller they are, then they can just go right through the lining of the lungs into your bloodstream, and those can be toxic. So once again, respiratory problems such as asthma is what you need to memorize. Um, so how can we improve particulate matter? So wood burning fireplaces is a big source. Now, I love a fire as much as the next person, and I often do have fires in the winter, um, but no wood burning on especially uh, bad air pollution days. In California, you may have noticed that when they build new homes, they um, will spray down the um, bare soil with water, and that is because by law, they can't allow that dust to become airborne. So they're spraying down with water trucks to prevent it. This is another one. You see that it's bold? Okay, so you have to memorize specifically that electrostatic precipitators and smokestacks reduce particulate matter. And again, that is a very specific term that you have to memorize. All right, so what do people who uh, live in China or move to China do? They often buy filters. So in their home, they have these electric filters that remove particulate matter. And then they often wear dust um, masks to keep from breathing that in as much. So lead in the air is not a big problem anymore. So that is great news. Uh, it is a heavy metal and if you, on an FRQ, talk about it like the source of lead is an air pollutant and you just say gas, it's wrong because it is not currently in gas. You need to say it's in old gas. If you say it's an old paint, 
how does paint become airborne? If they're asking you how the source of airborne lead and you say paint, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so you have to say that it's old paint that's been sanded and becomes airborne. Otherwise, paint doesn't become airborne. And don't tell me about spray paint because new paints don't have lead. So you can't have new spray paint with lead in it. Um, the biggest culprit in our air was uh, leaded gasoline. Some countries still have leaded gasoline. Um, I believe Iran is one, and they have terrible air pollution due to that. But that may have changed. Another source of, of lead in the air is ore and metal processing factories. So they dig up copper or iron or whatever from the ground, and they take it, and they break that stuff out of the rocks. Um, that can release lead into the atmosphere. And then battery manufacturing and recycling, if they're not following careful procedures, can release that into the atmosphere as well. So we've already learned what lead does. So if you breathe it in, these are the things that it causes. And then you have a bioaccumulation and biomagnification up the food chain. So really lead is not a problem anymore. We've had 98% drop in the atmosphere due to the ban on leaded gasoline. So really lead in our atmosphere is not a problem anymore. So that is great news. The next one is VOX, volatile organic compounds. So there's all kinds of them. Now volatile means easy to become a gas. And so paint, you can see the picture of paint here, that's one. Vox are primary, so make sure you mark that down, that they're primary. You need to know that your fuels or carbon chemicals that end in A and E, like butane, is a Vox. Um, you need to know that any of our aldehydes are Vox. Sometimes in the AP test, they'll just have a question with the word aldehyde, and they expect you to know that an aldehyde is a VOC. And um, so I have this here in bold because that was on a recent released AP test, aldehydes, and you had to know that they were talking about VOX. Benzene is another common VOX. So uh, gasoline um, and other fuels can release benzene into the air, which is bad. Things also that are super smelly and have a lot of odor are considered Vox. That includes artificial scents, so like scented candles, unfortunately. I mean, we all love scented candles, um, but if they're made with artificial fragrances, that is considered a Vox. It's not as bad as like benzene or aldehydes or butanes. We're not talking about that level, but they can lower the immune system if you have a lot of artificial fragrances in your home. So dry cleaning, um, some natural vox. So there are natural vox, smelly plants, like eucalyptus is a natural vox. Is that gonna hurt you? No, it's not. Um, you don't need to worry about plant vox, really, but they are vox. You just need to know that they are, but it's not anything that really hurts us. Now paints, a lot of paints now have vox-free paints. So it used to be when I taught this class, started teaching this class a dozen, year ago, dozen years ago, um, you couldn't really find very many vox free paints at the hardware store. But now there are, so if you go into Lowe's or Home Depot or another paint store, you will find a lot of variety of vox free paints, and so that's great. Same with varnishes. New carpets actually have formaldehyde, so here we have our aldehydes. Um, so carpets often have formaldehydes. Candles, if it's artificial fragrances, artificial fragrances and perfumes, fuel vapors. So again, anything that becomes vaporized, we have our box. So what does it do to the health? Well, it overloads the immune system. It can cause cancer. Um, some are worse than others. You don't really need to worry too much about your perfume causing cancer. More of these things can overload the immune system for people. Um, and then they can become irritants. So you also need to know that they cause uh, smog too. 
So they're one of the components to create ozone. So remember back with ozone, we had um, sunlight and heat plus NOx plus Vox equal ozone. So when it is hotter outside, so when the heat rises, the Vox also rise because more of the substances become airborne. They become vaporized. And so that's why heat increases ozone air pollution. So what can we do? Well, if you're going to work with paint, uh, ventilate your room, um, the room that you're going to paint in, have filters, uh, wear masks if you're going to be around a lot of um, Vox air pollution. We have standards too in the Clean Air Act and then using more natural substances with natural um, fragrances, so essential oil fragrances instead of artificial fragrances, those kinds of things help in the home. The next one is toxic air pollutants. So this is just a category of air pollutants that aren't necessarily one type, but they're all, they kind of put these toxins together. So, um, if you remember, we learned that mercury becomes airborne when we burn coal, and then it goes to the ocean, and eventually through bioaccumulation and biomagnification ends up like in swordfish and tuna. So there's a whole bunch of other things that can become airborne and that they're toxic. So our sources, metal smelting, so that's when you melt metal, we call it smelting. Sometimes when you treat sewage, you can release toxins, industry. Um, oh, also burning trash. Should add that. We don't really burn trash too much in our neighborhoods or in our city or in our um, state because we already have terrible air pollution. But when you burn trash, um, you can release all kinds of toxins from everything that is in the trash burning of plastics and other items. Um, so that's another one to add. A bunch of stuff, including cancer, reproductive defects, immune, respiratory, or neurological problems. Now, please notice here cancer. This is the only one that gives you cancer. So don't write lung cancer for any of the others. So almost every air pollutant, if you write asthma, you're good. For lead, you have to talk about lowering the IQ. And the only one that you can write lung cancer or any kind of cancers for, for an FRQ, is toxic air pollutants. So if you're writing about ozone or NOx, do not write that it causes lung cancer because that is not correct. So don't think that everything causes cancer because it doesn't. This is one of the only ones that does, toxic air pollutants. And then we have the Clean Air Act that's reduced it, which is good. The next one is not in your book, but you need to know it. And this is just a minor one. It's hardly ever asked about on the AP test, but we should you should know it just in case. So it's a uh, PANS. You just need to know PANS. You don't need to remember, remember peroxacetyl nitrate. Um, everyone in apes just calls it PANS. That's fine. So it's a form of atmospheric nitrates. And so it's a reaction, actually. So this is a secondary pollutant. And when hydrocarbons, so like fuels, go in the atmosphere, plus oxygen, and then you got NOx, and then light changes it into the pan. So this is what it gets changed into. So then what happens is in the atmosphere, these pans bind to more NOx and carry them like away from the freeway. So if you've got a bunch of cars on a freeway that are all spewing out NOx, and then they create the pan here, the pans can actually bind to more NOx and then drift in the atmosphere towards places that don't have a lot of cars, and they can create ozone in those places. So they're kind of bad because they're a carrier of other 
air pollutants or can, can carry and then create air pollutants somewhere else. So respiratory problems such as asthma, that's great for this one too. And we reduced them through uh, emissions regulations. So airborne, we also have some acids that become airborne. So these are secondary. They're what makes up acid rain. So sulfuric acid and nitric acid make up acid rain. And um, the health and environmental hazards are a lot. And so you really need to know in your book everything that happens. It elevates aluminum in the soil, all those kind of real specific things that are on page 473 you need to know. What can we do to help prevent acid rain? Um, calcium carbonate we can add to help bring up the pH. So calcium carbonate is a basic and we can add it to help bring up the pH. Wet scrubbers on smokestacks, remember they reduce SO2. And SO2 is the main culprit of acid rain. Again, this is more back east. We don't have a big problem here in California with acid rain. And fortunately, the Clean Air Act has reduced acid rain by 50%. And that's it for your chart. Oh, one more thing. Do remember to, um, in your book, to make sure that you know at least one of the two acid rain formulas. And that's it.